said uh, to him and uh, comment uh, Fausta. Comment Vijayalakshmi, thank you very much for uh, giving uh, an introduction uh, of monosity and uh, what is the importance of discussing and uh, study the monosity today that is already presented uh, by our comrades. Now, uh, firstly, I will think that uh, although Khamed uh, has said that I have studied that uh, monosriti and the uh, Brahministic literature, including that uh, Vedas and uh, other things, <coughs> but uh, uh, the actual fact is that uh, Brahministic literature is a very huge one. And Khamed uh, 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 Twin has said this also, that uh, probably this is the first time an organization which is working in custom relation field and uh, cultural field, uh, probably this is the first time has taken up uh, the study of monocity. So this is the uh, situation where actually uh, in the past a thorough discussion on Brahministic literature, including monocity and uh, Vedas, and uh, other uh, books, uh, Gita, etc. So, uh, this is not done properly. However, the uh, whole literature is so huge that it is not a job of a particular person also. This is a collective work. The work uh, <coughs> we have started, but it is <coughs> ultimate claim that uh, I have gone through uh, the whole uh, Brahministic literature it is a collective work and definitely uh, आपका माइक बंद हो गया कॉम्रेड शंकर आपका माइक माइक हाँ एक फोन आ गया था अच्छा तो डेफिनेटली अ कलेक्टिव एफर्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू take up the study, the whole Brahministic literature, and to understand what to, uh, today the fascistic forces, the Saffron corporate fascistic forces, what they are actually trying to do, and how they are going to, uh, to implement their fascistic program in Indian context, that is not a new thing also. Uh, you know that uh, for uh, many uh, hundred years or thousand years, for last uh, Vedas was written or compost rather, uh, around 1500 uh, BC. It was started to compose in 1500 BC and uh, it continued uh, to, uh, to be composed up to 1000 uh, BC or uh, uh, 800 BC. So through this long time, <coughs> the Vedas were composed and then the uh, 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 city books uh, started to uh, appear and other Brahministic literature uh, uh, came in the same. So, uh, this thing, uh, they, are, they are implementing their uh, type of uh, uh, ruling. Uh, today we, are, we call it fascist uh, rule. But at the time of Sankaracharya, that is uh, also uh, another type of attack on the whole uh, uh, spectrum of uh, uh, opposing force or struggling force or progressive force. So that is also one type of uh, very uh, radius attack on uh, on the progressive forces. So this is their uh, their culture. This is their uh, rule. They uh, they are doing this thing for several uh, thousand years. So uh, we need to understand that because there is a continuity. What they are doing this. Uh, BJP or RSS, they have a very strong root in Indian society. This root is uh, Ved and Vedanta, especially the Vedanta. And this Vedic culture and Vedantic culture, especially the later Vedantic culture, and uh, which was later uh, led by Gaurapada and then uh, his disciple Sankara, and uh, then uh, today uh, via uh, Vivekananda, uh, etc. So this is uh, this has a very strong root in Indian society and and uh, and uh, history and a continuation. If we do not understand their continuation, we will not be able to understand their actual character. So that is why Manushriti now it is uh, it has come 
in the discussion because uh, several BJP and RSS leaders they are saying that uh, that is their agenda correct to the state that in the organizer if this uh, writer came uh, in 1947 that they want to manage city in the place of a uh, uh, constitution so today also they are trying to uh, replace the existing constitution uh, <coughs> by monocity you see that uh, Manu Sriti sometimes is called Manu Sanghita. But Manu, Manu Sriti is not Manu Sanghita. Sanghita is, uh, is meant for the Vedas. But to give the equal status of Vedas, Manu Sriti sometimes uh, uh, is called as Manu Sanghita. But this is, Manu Sanghita is a different kind of literature. And, and the Sanghita, that, that means the Vedas, uh, those are a different kind of literature. Vedas, Vedas are considered as sacred uh, books uh, which uh, mainly uh, deal the uh, religion. So this is a belief, although it is not true, because uh, Vedas uh, are something else, which uh, we may discuss in future, that what actually Vedas are. But, uh, but as far as the uh, common wisdom or conventional wisdom, Vedas are sacred texts which deal religion. And Sriti, Sriti books are different. That is a law book. They are, uh, all, all Sriti books, including Manu Sriti, they uh, claim uh, full conformity with the Vedas. But they are a different kind of literature, which is a, 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 a law book, which are uh, going to establish a uh, detailed uh, penal system. Uh, and in this uh, Manu uh, Sriti, uh, the, uh, the book is a vast one, huge one, and total there are uh, 2,684 verses. So you understand that this 2,684 verses covering the all aspects of our uh, life, socio-cultural life, economic life, everything of our life uh, has come under this 2684 verses. That you uh, do this thing, you do not do this thing, you can do this thing, you cannot do this thing. If you do this, then you will be punished. And uh, what will be the punishment? That is also uh, jotted down. That is uh, actually city books and Manu city was... Uh, uh, there and uh, it is said that this Manu Sriti was uh, written uh, by Manu and who is a Manu? Manu is the first man. Manu is the first man from uh, he only the human race was started. That is why he, he is a progenitor of the uh, human race. So this is uh, Manu. This is uh, this is said by the Brahministic scholars. But the thing is that this is not true, we understand, that this is not true. Uh, the first man uh, may be a, uh, maybe a not a human. A first human is not, uh, maybe not a human. He is a half human and a half uh, ape. So, uh, Monu, you know, the, actually who is Monu? Here, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, research uh, on that uh, thing. And uh, uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, he did a magnificent thing. He has a uh, good uh, book, a very magnificent book uh, he wrote, that is the revolution and counter-revolution in ancient India. And in this book, Baba Sahib Ambedkar said, that is Manu, uh, he is practically, actually uh, came from the Vigu family. And uh, in every pages of the Manu city, there is signed by Vigu. But Vigu is a family name. Vigu is a family man. So, uh, what is the name of the author? That was also pointed out by Baba Sahib Ambedkar in the same book. That is uh, in Narva's Sriti. That is another Sriti book. Uh, there are many uh, Sriti books. Narva's Sriti is another Sriti book where it is uh, said, it is uh, said very clearly that the uh, <coughs> writer of Manu Sriti is uh, uh, Sumati Bhargava. This Sumati Bhargava came from the Vigu family. And this Vigu family also uh, uh, had a long history in the uh, in the Vedas. 
several times this uh, vibhu vibhu bisamitra you know that is uh, very well that is uh, in uh, with us some uh, priest families who took part in the war so uh, bisamitra vasist and uh, this uh, vibhu they are there so, so this vibhu family they are involved to write down the manuscripti and the name of the writer is sumati bhargava and this sumati bhargava is a close associate of pushamitra sumga so uh, now we will discuss who is pushamitra sumga and uh, what he did but to understand the time of manuscripti it, it is important the fathers or others who uh, <coughs> uh, did a lot of research on uh, indian uh, ancient texts uh, including manuscripti and this following uh, uh, scholars they came came to an understanding there are a lot of debates with this uh, time of manuscripti there are a lot of debates but uh, all debates are uh, even sum up that the manuscripti is uh, probably uh, it was written uh, <coughs> in between 200 uh, BCE to 200 CE. Within this 400 years, it sometime in this 400 years, manuscripti was written from 200 uh, BCE to 200 CE. So this thing uh, can be said depending on the foreign researchers uh, who did research on the manuscripti. But Ambedkar, he said very clearly. He quoted from the Nalanda city, and from the um, uh, evidences of Nalanda city, he said that uh, the writer of Nalanda city is uh, Sumati Bhargava. He came from a, uh, from the Bengali family, and Sumati Bhargava was a close associate with uh, Pushyamitra Sumgo. Although no other historians in our uh, Uh, country uh, like there are a lot of uh, progressive uh, historians who are having Ramila uh, Thapar and other, but uh, no one supported uh, this. Although, but uh, 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 Ambedkar was very firmly and very strongly put forward this uh, point. And when we quoted or uh, cited uh, the evidence from the Nalanda city, then uh, and uh, and the uh, connection between Bhigu family and the Pushyamitra Sumbo family, Sumbo family, Sumbo family also had a uh, antiquity and they had a good relation, uh, interrelated uh, families with the Bhigu. And this Jibu family, Sumbo family, uh, uh, this history uh, give us gives us impression that it may be right. Uh, Ambedkar uh, might be right uh, when he said that uh, Pushyamitra Sumbo was directly involved in uh, writing Manusriti, and the Sumati Bhargava wrote Manusriti, and both of uh, them are con- contemporary. So this is the uh, Ambedkar state. पहले उनको पूरा बोलने देते हैं पहले उसको पूरी बात रखते हैं उसके बाद करेंगे है ना अच्छा कहेंगे हो गया कमेंट टीम हो गया आपका Chances are higher. Okay. Okay. Now uh, then uh, we will uh, come to this point that who is Pushyam Mitra Sundar and uh, what is the importance of emergence of Manusriti. To understand this point, we then we have to uh, understand the background of Manusriti. Uh, when when the Aryans started to come. Uh, in india they uh, what they did they are uh, the, uh, they started a civilization which is called vedic civilization and this vedic civilization we know that the vedic people the uh, aryan people they were basically pastoral people they did not know agriculture but uh, uh, this uh, uh, the the uh, before uh, uh, vedic culture there was another culture in our uh, country uh, country means that is not uh, today's country that is entire uh, subcontinent you know in this subcontinent there was another uh, civilization jo that civilization uh, uh, that is uh, harappa uh, uh, manjadaro and there are lot of centers of 
about this uh, civilization. Today, more and more centers are discovered uh, from Afghanistan to Gujarat. There is a huge uh, uh, geographical span is very huge, and in this uh, area there is another civilization, uh, the Harappan Harappan civilization, which is generally called, and this Harappan civilization was based on agriculture. And uh, when Indians came, they started a new uh, civilization. Uh, this civilization gradually uh, developed uh, to uh, from a pastoral society to an uh, agriculturalist society, and uh, gradually this agriculturalist society uh, developed surplus, the surplus wealth. Uh, initially, there was no surplus wealth, so there was a very strong communistic feeling within the uh, Aryan. Yes, or Aryan. Uh, it is not a race. The Aryan people. We, uh, it is better to call Aryan people. In the Aryan people, uh, you know that is a very strong communistic uh, sentiment and communistic concept because there was no surplus. When the surplus started to appear, uh, when the society uh, was, uh, started to divide uh, into groups uh, or classes, and uh, this uh, uh, started especially when. Iron was discovered in 800 BC. So, from this 800 BC to 200 BC, so 200 BC, uh, if we uh, accept Ambedkar's state that uh, around uh, Pushyabindu Sundu, Pushyabindu Sundu came in the power in 183 BC. So, in 183 BC, when Pushyabindu Sundu came in the power and uh, 200 BC, if we uh, safely take that uh, uh, manuscript was written. So from 800 BC, when iron was discovered and uh, agriculture took a very sharp uh, turn and a huge surplus was uh, uh, formed. And from this time to this time, 800 uh, BC to 200 BC, there was a time gap of 600 years. In this 600 years, that is a very special time in uh, India at that time. India means at that time, India is a very special time and is a transitional uh, time from a communistic uh, type of uh, society to a strongly class divided society. Uh, if, if there is a transition between these two, this is the time. This in this time span from 800 BC to 200 BC. In this period, we will see lot of changes. a uh, lot of changes uh, are taking place first there are urbanization was started when the surplus was uh, started uh, to appear in the scene then there is a ruling class also they uh, was formed previously there was a, in vedic society the aryan people had organization called sabha and samiti this was uh, this uh, sabha and samiti were Uh, can be you can be call, you can call it a political uh, institution uh, in loose term loosely uh, political institution sabha and samiti but when this uh, uh, surplus started to appear in the scene society is started to break in the uh, classes ruling class started to appear then this sabha and samiti was broken and then in the in place of this sabha and samiti the new type of organization political organization start to come that is state and uh, uh, when the state is uh, uh, is coming uh, it, uh, is is formed then the uh, organization it is called the second organization in indian society first organization was at the time of harappan culture and the second organization it is called in indian history when the uh, ruling class shifted from village to town organization is started this is the first uh, new thing new thing in vedic society second thing is that that script the vedic people or aryan people they did not have any script uh, in their language whatever they compose they compose uh, through uh, words they memorize it whole uh, literature they used to uh, <coughs> keep in memory and generation after generation they uh, keep it in the memory so this was the very unique feature of a uh, very uh, society and aryan culture and in this period in this uh, transitional period which i said that is from 600 800 bc to 200 bc in this transitional period one new thing has come that is organization second new thing has come that is the script was introduced at the time of uh,
Africa. First uh, evidence of uh, you know, writing in Vedic society we get from the rock uh, edicts of As uh, Asoka. So this was uh, script was uh, introduced. So this is the uh, uh, second thing. Large scale trade, huge trade. Large scale trade means you know that uh, foreign trade, international trade, and uh, there was a very uh, famous disciple of uh, Buddha who uh, whose name was uh, Anath Pindaka. This Anath Pindaka actual name is uh, Sudatta, and Sudatta was a uh, uh, trader, international trader, and it is said that uh, at that time all the known places in the world had a branch of Sudatta's. Uh, a company, uh, so uh, he had a trading relation uh, with uh, a large section of of the globe at that time known places and where trade relations were there. So a large scale trade uh, developed at that time. Uh, the economy was uh, flourishing, and all these type of things was uh, developed. And this development there was uh, due to uh, another thing ideologically. All this development. Uh, ideologically got a uh, boost up by uh, Buddhism. Uh, not Buddhism uh, only. Buddhism is a branch of a larger uh, uh, school. This school is a Shamanic uh, school. One side there is a Brahmanic uh, ideology, Brahmanic uh, schooling, Brahmanic, Brahmanic thought. Another side was that this was an antithesis of uh, Brahmanism. That was a Shramanic culture, Shramanism. This Shramanism, you know, Jain philosophy or Jain cult or Jain uh, sect, Buddhist sect, different type of orthodox sect, including there are a lot of names. Uh, you uh, may have heard the name of uh, Sanjay Dilataputra. Ajit S. Kamli, all these are uh, were the sect of Ajivak sect and came under the umbrella of Shamanism. This Shamanism or Shamanic cultures, uh, this Shamanic culture is a, there is a term, uh, it came from a term called Shom. Shom means labor. It is directly connected with the labor in Bhutu. This Shamanic culture, Shamanic philosophy, Shamanic ideas, they are directly related and connected with the toiling masses of the society. That is why the name Shram or labor is associated with this uh, uh, school. And uh, Brahmanism, on the other hand, it is uh, connected uh, with the name of Brahma. And this uh, Brahma was a concept. The concept is that the uh, world is created by a uh, uh, supernatural uh, thing, so a supernatural idea, which uh, may, you may conceive it like uh, today a uh, god or something like that. But at that time it was called Brahma. And from this Brahma, the Brahmanism and, uh, uh, and the Aryan people, uh, you know, they used to call them Brahmanas. So that was their idea. If you go through Rig Veda, then you will see that the whole universe was started from uh, some idea. This idea was called in, sometimes it was called uh, Hiranagarva, hmm, the golden umbrella, uh, Hiranagarva. Sometimes it is called Pujapati. And later it was uh, said Brahma. So from this Brahma, this term came, Brahman, Brahmanism, and the Aryan people, especially the Vedic people, who composed Vedas. Because all Aryans, they, they uh, did not compose Vedas. A particular portion, a particular portion of the Aryan race, uh, which uh, Aryan race means Aryan people, uh, they were basically called themselves at uh, Trishu Bharata clan. This Trishu Bharata clan called themselves Brahmanas. This Brahmanas came from the town Brahma. This Brahma means that is the supernatural creator of the universe, Brahma. Therefore, this Brahma, uh, Brahmanism, the idea came. And this Brahmanism was based on uh, male chauvinist idea. Whole Vedas is uh, uh, based on the male chauvinist idea. Male chauvinism, uh, idealism, and the uh, uh, ruling class. That is Brahmanism. And the opposite. If this is thesis, then the antithesis is Shamanism. In this Shamanism, the idea is connected with the term Shram, means the labor and the toiling people and their aspiration, their culture, their uh, everything is related with Shamanism. The whole Aryavarta, whole 
Mayawarta was divided into two uh, <coughs> dominant forces. That is, one uh, side there is uh, Brahminist forces, and another side there is the Shamanist forces led by the Gautam Buddha. So this was the situation at that time. This uh, Shamanic culture in uh, our country, it is... Uh, 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 there is a confusion that uh, what I said that uh, Shamanism was directly related with uh, Shram and uh, Brahmanism was related to the ruling class and uh, here uh, uh, one may uh, say that uh, uh, Gautam Buddha was, uh, uh, came from a royal family and uh, his uh, uh, father was a king. So how can we say that uh, they are, uh, it, is, it was related to the uh, Shram and uh, this thing? So, you know, uh, here I just, uh, uh, I just want to raise the point, but I am not elaborating this because this is another part of our discussion. Uh, so, I am just indicating that without uh, much elaboration. That is, at the time of 16 Mahajanapadas, when the whole, uh, the political center of Aryans was shifted uh, to further east from Hastinapur or uh, Delhi, Kur Delhi Kur Kurukshetra. From this side, it was shifted to the eastern side, uh, Magadha. Magadha is uh, uh, currently in Bihar. So in this uh, uh, whole area work was centered uh, through, uh, centered uh, uh, by this uh, Magadha. And uh, uh, the Magadha was, uh, uh, that time, it was a monarchy. There, at that time, 16 big lands, great lands, 16 great lands were found, like Magadha, Kasi, Kosola, Sakka, Kolia, uh, etc. So here, uh, out of these 16 Mahajanapadas, 8 Mahajanapadas were republic, and uh, 8 Mahajanapadas were uh, monarchy. So these uh, republics, you know, when uh, where uh, Gautama Buddha was born, that was a that was a Sakka clan, and it was a republic. Sakka was a republic, and in this republic, we will come to this portion very beneficially in his uh, in our book uh, Indian history. Uh, this republic had a typical type of administration. It was, there was a parliamentary uh, parliamentary based uh, uh, parliamentary uh, administration. There was a parliament, and all the members of the parliament uh, were called rajas. The, the Raja in Sakko clan is no way similar with the Raja in Malak, Malarki. He was not a monarch. He was a member of parliament. At that time, that is why we see there were many kings in Sakko clan. Not only Suddhadhan. Suddhadhan was the father of Gautama Buddha, but Suddhadhan was not a single king of Sakko. There was Bhaddiyo. There are, uh, many kings were there. Actually, these kings were the member of the parliament. And uh, they uh, were engaged in agriculture. In monarchy, that was a Brahmin Kathriya Brahmin uh, uh, domination, especially Brahmin domination, and these uh, rulers, they were not, not engaged in uh, uh, productive work, any kind of labor, any kind of productive work. Brahminism, they, the accumulation of wealth through plunder and war. Whereas in Shamanism, the accumulation of wealth was taking place gradually through economy, economic activity, productive, productive activity, agriculture, trade, etc. So that was the main difference. So uh, here we will see that at the time of 16 Mahayana Padras, when at the time of Gautama Buddha, <coughs> There was, there were, uh, the uh, struggle between this Shamanism and Brahmanism took a very sharp turn when the whole uh, Aryavarta was gradually uh, became under strong influence of uh, Buddhism. After Dhanush of Buddha, uh, within a very few years, within uh, 150 years or so, or so the uh, Moral Empire was formed. At the uh, 323 BC, uh, Chandragupta Maurya, he established the Mauryan Empire. Chandragupta Maurya was a Jain, and uh, his uh, uh, grandson, uh, Asaka, uh, he was converted in, into uh, Buddhism after uh, Kalinga, where you know. That this time, this Mauryan Empire was the heyday of Shamanism in uh, Aryavarta, and especially at the time of uh, Asaka the Great. 
and that and the domination of Dalits and the Satriyas and Brahmin domination this was totally shattered, totally destroyed totally destroyed although it was uh, the uh, uh, Mauryan Empire uh, based on the Cotillion system Cotillion system is a secular system comparatively and uh, there, uh, that is why Mauryan system was a uh, uh, modern system uh, at that time it was a modern system that was a, a some kind of secularism uh, also that will get he tried to maintain we know that the, the third uh, 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 that is the third plenum of uh, Buddhist monks it was held at the time of uh, Asoka and uh, uh, although Asoka arranged everything uh, did everything but he uh, did not participate in Penam uh, personally because he said that I am a king of not only the Buddhist I am a king of Buddhist, Saiva, Brahmins, uh, Jaino, everyone I am a king of my people so I cannot take direct parti participate uh, in, in the Penam so he was not uh, uh, present in the Penam so this kind of uh, balance he uh, tried to to maintain. So, uh, in this period, in this modern period, you know, that is a, in the uh, field of culture, in the field of science, in the field of trade, in the field of any, all the field, in the public work, uh, public system, uh, service to the people, uh, sharing the surplus among the people, everything uh, was uh, uh, reached at the highest uh, peak. Reached uh, at its, its zenith, you can say. So, uh, this period was uh, at the time of Vasak. And throughout this uh, modern empire, we will see that India was at that time India, uh, that, uh, definitely at that time India, was transformed into a modern uh, type of administration uh, based on international trade. The, uh, the, uh, Osaka sent a religious delegation to many countries. And beyond this religious uh, delegation, the traders uh, used to visit. Uh, and we, uh, sometimes with the delegation, the traders uh, uh, used to go. And the trade relation, uh, religious relation, cultural relation and trade relation with a large part of the uh, globe was established at that time. So, uh, this was the uh, scenario uh, under the uh, Mauryan Empire. And the Mauryan Empire, uh, uh, Mauryan family was a, uh, came from a so-called back, uh, backward family. It was not the uh, advanced, so-called advanced uh, castes or uh, advanced burners uh, they were not Brahmins or uh, Khatiyas uh, you can say that Sudra there is a debate whether they were Sudra or Vaishya uh, but uh, uh, Ambedkar clearly said that they were Sudras so that was the last Sudra rule uh, uh, in that sense uh, ideologically Gupta period is also from backward people Guptas but ideologically Guptas was a bit different uh, they were much uh, inclined to the Brahministic philosophy you know so uh, Mauryan Empire was the last Sudra uh, Empire where, uh, where uh, the uh, Samaric culture reached at its head in the year of 1800 uh, 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 183 BCE 183 BCE, the last uh, Mauryan king, uh, uh, he was a great brother, uh, uh, brother, he was killed by his uh, commander in chief, Pushamitra Sudra. Uh, brother, great brother was killed by his commander in chief, Pushamitra Sudra. And this Pushamitra Sudra was, was a Brahmin family. Pushamitra Sudra came from the Brahmins, and this Brahmins uh, <coughs> struck back. Uh, a massive coup data uh, was organized uh, by him and uh, Bhagavata was killed and uh, Pushamita Sundra took power and the Sundra dynasty uh, started and under this Sundra dynasty again the Brahmin Khatriya domination came back. So this is Pushamita Sundra. And when we can, when we uh, re-establish or recapture Magadha and uh, re-establish Brahminism over Magadha then it definitely 
according to Ambedkar, Ambedkar gave this person very uh, convincingly that uh, he felt that this Brahmanistic rule uh, has uh, has to uh, put on a firm uh, basis. This basis cannot be provided by Sutis or Vedas. There must be some penal system, must be some uh, law. Uh, our society must need some law system and these city books uh, started to appear and uh, at that time uh, Manus city, the Srimati Bhargava, the close associate with Pusamitra Sindhu, uh, probably uh, there is a chance that he was directed to write or he wrote, that is not a very uh, important point, but at that time Srimati Bhargava, he composed or wrote the Manus city to give a permanency of Brahministic uh, rule over Magadha and uh, uh, entire Aryavarsa. So this is Manishriti to uh, uh, Ambedkar uh, call it a counter-revolution. Ambedkar called Buddhism, uh, uh, emergence of Buddhism, uh, a revolution in uh, India. So you know that Ambedkar is a very fond of French revolution. So he called the Buddhist uh, movement uh, as a uh, well, like French Revolution in ancient India and uh, <coughs> Manu Shri, the emergence of Manu put it up to Sanitra Sangha uh, the whole thing is a counter-revolution so Manu Shri is the counter-revolution in Indian society so this is Manu Shri and the relation between Manu, Manu or Sumati Bhargava and Kusanitra Sangha uh, Enter in uh, Manu Sriti, we will see the character of counter revolution. So, <coughs> here, see, <coughs> Manu said, whatever exists in the world is the property of Brahmana. On account of the excellence of his origin, the Brahman is indeed entitled to all. This is the first mandala. There are 10 chapters. Uh, sorry, not 10, there are many chapters. Uh, probably there are 21 chapters in uh, Manu Sriti. Uh, <coughs> but in the first chapter, there are in, uh, verse number uh, 100. Uh, it is said that whatever exists in the world is the property of Brahmana. So, uh, uh, why? Because uh, by birth, uh, on account of the excellence of his origin, the Brahmin, because uh, according to uh, Rigveda, the uh, Brahmin was originated from the mouth of the Purusha. Purusha means the, the cosmic man. Uh, from the, from Purusha, uh, Purusha's mouth, uh, Brahmin uh, originated. So that is due, due to excellence. So due, due to this excellence of his origin, Brahmin is entitled, uh, <coughs> that is the ownership of the uh, everything in the world, all worlds. So this is a remarkable uh, 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 verdict uh, or dicta. Uh, uh, so you know that, that is a uh, uh, in uh, before that before Manu, uh, actually it was considered that the uh, Kshatriyas uh, they are the owner of land. Uh, finally, the last resort. But in our country, you know. That is, that land, uh, uh, there are selling and buying of land. Uh, I, I, I said about uh, uh, Sudhartha, or Anathindata. This Sudhartha, he uh, gave uh, uh, land, uh, not land, that was uh, the first uh, 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 lot, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, the, uh, some kind of uh, thing was uh, uh, formed to, for staying the Sangha. Previously, the Buddhist Sangha, under the leadership of Gautama, they used to stay at, uh, under, under the uh, trees. Uh, when they uh, started to uh, leave their uh, home, and then they started to stay under the trees. So later, uh, gradually, uh, what happened? That is that uh, some kind of uh, moths were started uh, to uh, build, and uh, the first, uh, probably the first, 
or maybe that is not very important but the one of the very famous mods uh, that was uh, given uh, to gautama by sudarta or aratundaka and uh, this mod was uh, built on a land which is called jetvan jetvan was jetvan means the garden of jet jet was the name of a prince and this jet prince he uh, had a <coughs> land or garden and this aratunda he bought uh the rice and it are calculated uh, that uh, what was the price of the land uh, how much uh, money uh, sudat or anatinda ka gave to uh, jet pins rahul sankirtan and his uh, team they calculated this thing uh, but it was separate thing i am not going into that but the thing is that land was uh, bought by sudat so land buying and selling uh, it was possible Uh, at that time uh, because the ownership some kind of ownership uh, was given to the user but the final ownership was uh, uh, under the hand of the state or the uh, satyas because satya was the ruler but this is the first time this is the first time in indian history it was said and in a city book in the kurna system it was said that all thing in the world all wealth in the world that is actually the owner is the brahman why because due to the excellence of his origin previously <coughs> this uh, caste system or varna division sometimes are uh, described as that uh, 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 brahmins uh, having some qualities chatriyas they are having a different qualities and uh, vaishya and shudra they are having uh, separate qualities and depending on the qualities the varna is fixed but in uh, manu this is the first time it is said you know quality doesn't matter the matter is uh, is your origination how you originated and uh, if you are brahmin by birth you are brahmin so uh, you are the owner of of the whole world if you are by birth you are a brahmin you are the owner of the whole world the ownership is given to brahmins so this is the uh, result of the counter revolution uh, led by manu and kusumita singh you know all this brahminist brahminist uh, forces so then uh, it is said that brahmana the brahmana eats but his own food whereas but his own apparel bestows but his own in arms other mortals subsist through the benevolence of the brahmana that was said uh, that is the same uh, mandala first mandala and the verse number 101 <coughs> when when a brahmin he has come to uh, you say and uh, he uh, beg alms and you give uh, alms don't think that uh, you are the proprietor of uh, the thing which you have uh, given to him it is basically his property because he is a brahmin it is basically his property and it is his benevolence that you are having this property so at any point of time he can take away your property in his hand so this is a very fantastic system of uh, accumulation of wealth this is a plunder uh, uh, basically plunder and uh, plunder in the name of religion plunder in the name of the sacred books because city and city combine the combination of city and city uh, city books means the mono city law books and uh, city means the vedas because city mono city it claims the conformity with the vedas and uh, veda Uh, one uh, Vela and uh, Siti, Mahu Siti. This Siti Siti command has given the full sanctity to the plunder, which uh, Brahmin can uh, take away your property because all properties, everything under the sun, actually belong to the Brahmins. So this is the uh, uh, first uh, uh, result or consequence of the uh, counter revolution led by Mahu. जो मनुस्मृति जो प्रतिक्रांति देन यू विल सी दैट द द जॉब वर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड आई मीन दैट सम काइंड ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ लेबर लेबर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम वाज डेवलप्ड एंड ब्राह्मण्स दे दे हैव टू टीच दे विल टीच 
the people uh, do uh, some uh, other things like uh, to offer sacrifice, to study the Vedas, uh, etc. And uh, Satyas, they will protect the people. They will protect the people. Uh, they will also are entitled to give sacrifices and to study uh, Vedas. And most importantly, for the Satyas, it is said that they, they must abstain from attaching himself to sensual pleasure. Any kind of uh, <coughs> pleasure activities, uh, they are uh, uh, prohibited. Because the wealth, uh, the, which the Satyas ha had at that time, the Brahmins, uh, it, uh, it, it will go smoothly to Brahmins if the Satyas are restrained from pleasuring activities. So this was uh, in their mind, the, in the mind of the Brahmins. This is the uh, Satyas. And the vice, uh, wh what they will do? They will do all the economic uh, activities. They will tend the cattle, bestow gifts, to offer sacrifices, to study Vedas, to trade, to lend money, and to cultivate land. So, both the things they will do. They will, one side, they will do the economic activity, to trade, to lend money, uh, to cultivate land, all these things they will do. And what they will do with that, with the money, with the surplus, what they will do? They will offer sacrifice. They, uh, that means they will give it to the Brahmins. They will do uh, economic activity, collect the uh, wealth or surplus from the economic activity and hand over to the uh, Brahmins. Uh, this is uh, their task. So, uh, to bestow gifts, etc. So, that is the system of And what Sudra will do? The Sudra, uh, one, only one occupation. Uh, that is Lord prescribed to the Sudra, that is to serve meekly even these other three castes or varnas. That is uh, in the same uh, mandala, first mandala, 91, verse number 91. It is all are coming uh, one after another, verse number 89, verse number 90, verse number 91, the task uh, or the job division, uh, distribution of uh, work uh, among the uh, varnas. So, uh, what uh, Sudhira will do? They will, they, will, they, will, they will do the economic activities, but the property, they, they are not uh, owner of the property, they will do all sorts of things, labor activities, and to serve meekly, meekly means without any complaint. They cannot complain that I have to do this thing, I am, I am doing this thing, they cannot, they are not entitled to complain. They will serve the three brothers meekly. Three brothers mean basically the Brahmin Satya combined because a large section of Vaisya and Sudhya was mixed at that time. So, uh, this is the thing. Actually, there are, uh, you will see that through this uh, monosphere, this division, Varna division actually what it did. Varna division, that was a class division, uh, took place in, in, the, in the shape of, in the form of Varna division, the very strong class division took place, where a large section of the people, they will do economic activity, they will produce the surplus uh, value or the surplus uh, production or surplus wealth and they, that will be added over to the Brahmins or the Brahmin Chatriya ruling class. So this system was very strongly established uh, at the, from the time of the Manu. So what we were discussing, the transitional period, this transitional period started from the 800 BC when iron was discovered and the uh, uh, excess wealth or huge number of surplus wealth started to appear in economic activities from 800 BC to 200 BC when Manu came in the uh, scene, this transitional period was there and this transitional period has come to an end at the time of Manu because transition has ended a very strong class divided society, class society emerged. So that is the reflection uh, you will see in Manu city. That was the second consequence of the counter revolution led by Manu. Uh, this, uh, very clearly Manu uh, said in his uh, law book, that is, no collection of wealth must be made by a Sudra. Even though he be able to do it, for a Sudra who has acquired wealth gives pain to Brahmanas. If a Sudra 
is la like able to accumulate wealth or uh, uh, or doing uh, some work say in trade and uh, uh, gradually traders uh, uh, traders become a larger and uh, accumulation of wealth take place if he, if he, if he has got this ability but he will not be entitled to do this thing why because the wealth in the hand of the sudra gives pain to the brahmins so they are not sudra is not entitled to have wealth in his hand and if he has in uh, some reason or other then uh, a brahm a brahmana may confidently seize the goods of his uh, that means sudra uh, for as that slave can have no property his master may take his possession they have said they have said that uh, sudra is a slave because uh, they uh, they have done only one occupation the lord prescribed for them to serve meekly uh, the upper three brothers so they are slave so if they have any property in spite of all this six and in spite of everything they have any property in their hand a brahmin can confidently seize that uh, property from the hands of the sudras because the slave cannot be a proprietor of wealth so this is the uh, economic uh, relation that is why i am saying that basically it was a uh, uh, class uh, uh, division uh, in the name of varna division with the sanction when it is varna division then naturally it uh, gets sanction from the religious side from the suti uh, from the suti that is the vedas the religious uh, sacred text of uh, Aryans, that uh, from that the sanction uh, they have taken, and with this sanction, which with this, this is the peculiar Indian society. Since the ca- class originated with the sanction of religion, then it took a special shape, which is called varna, var varna division. So this is the uh, thing uh, system uh, um, um, uh, developed, and if there was a revolt against it. Forget about revolt. If you say against this anything, if you say uh, if a sudra uh, says anything uh, against this system, against this operation, or uh, anything like that, what will happen? Uh, Mohan said, "A once born man, once born man uh, means uh, sudra, because uh, <coughs> there is a the sacred threat uh, is not allowed for them." The uh, sacred thread uh, was allowed for the uh, three brahmins, Brahman, Kshatriya, and uh, Vaishya. And nowadays it was more uh, restricted. It was only restricted to the Brahman, Brahmanas. So uh, at that time there were three brahmins, including Vaishya, uh, uh, Kshatriya. The sacred thread uh, was entitled to uh, have. So when you were having a sacred thread at the age of seven or eight uh, years of your age, then you were the second. Uh, Birth uh, is taking place. It is according to the Brahminist uh, literature. So this is a twice born uh, man from Brahmin. Uh, today, uh, obviously Brahmin only. But at that time, from the three Brahmins, they were twice born, and the Sudra is a single born, so or once born. So here it is written in uh, Mandala number eight, uh, verse number two seventy. That is a once born man. That means a sudra who insults a twice-born man with gross invective shall have his tongue cut out, for he is of low origin. Since he comes from the low origin, quote unquote low origin, that means uh, that he is a sudra uh, once-born. If he insults, forget about revolt, forget about anything like that. If he insults, insult means he shall feel that he is insulting me. That depends so, so you have no feeling. So uh, if uh, if they feel uh, that uh, a sudra is insulting a Brahmin or a twice born man, then what will happen? The penalty is that his tongue cut out. Uh, <coughs> next verse: If he mentions the name and caste or jati of the twice born with contumely and iron nail ten fingers long, shall be thrust red hot into his mouth. If you say uh, something uh, uh, with, uh, 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 with the jati or with the caste, if you name the caste with some kind of insulting uh, thing, then what will happen? If you insult the caste, basically, if you insult the runners, then uh, what will happen? Then a iron nail, ten fingers long, shall be thrust red hot 
into his mouth. That is the next verse. And uh, next to next. If you arrogantly teach Brahmanas their duty, if you Asudra, if you arrogantly teach Brahmana their duty, uh, the kings will cause hot oil to be poured into his mouth and into his ears. So, see, this is the <coughs> system. Uh, you cannot say anything. You cannot oppose. You, you, you cannot say against any, uh, nothing. If you do that, in being a sudra, then you, have, you will invite uh, this type of uh, penalties. So, this is the uh, <coughs> penal system. This is the structure of the society uh, came under uh, Manu. This is the third consequence of the counter-revolution. Still, we will see that uh, this uh, uh, whole uh, system of the Varna uh, division, uh, if this is uh, uh, this is basically a class division, and the class division took a shape or took a form, a peculiar form in Indian soil, that is the Varna division, then at the sake of continuing the class division, you actually you have to continue the Varna division. So the Varna caste system, you uh, need to uh, uh, retain or you need, you need to uh, run it uh, uh, continuously. So to give uh, uh, permanence uh, to this system, what you need actually? You need uh, endogamy. That means that uh, Sudra uh, can marry a Sudra woman, uh, a Sudra uh, person, a Sudra male, uh, he can marry a, a Brahmin uh, a girl, and the Brahmin also, Brahmin male, uh, they were also discouraged to uh, marry the Sudra girl. It is uh, said in the city that uh, <coughs> it is declared that a Sudra woman alone, alone can be the wife of a Sudra. Sudra will buy Sudra. And uh, a Brahmin who takes a Sudra wife to his bed will, after death, sink into hell. And, uh, if uh, a Brahmin marry a Sudra wife, then uh, after his death he will sink into hell. If he begets a child by her, he will lose the rank of a Brahmana. And that is the most dangerous thing for Manu. To beget a child by a Brahmin in the womb of a Sudra woman, then he said that he will lose the uh, rank of a Brahmana. Because this mixing, inter Varna marriage, this, this mixing is very much dangerous in order to uh, give the Varna structure a permanent feature. If you need to uh, get it a permanent thing, then you have to prohibit the inter Varna marriage. Before Manu, if you go through the Brahministic literature, and Ambedkar cited many examples from the Brahministic literature, where the uh, uh, men and women from different Varnas, uh, they uh, fall in love to each other, and uh, eventually they got married. Uh, there are many, many instance, in, in instances, and uh, very prominent uh, figures, that you know the uh, KD Vaz, Christopher Kaila Vaz, his uh, father, Parasar, he was a Brahmin, and his mother, Saptavati, he was from a uh, Fisher, uh, he was a Fisher woman from the Nisad uh, uh, group, or Nisad clan. So, uh, this is uh, an example. There are many examples. Jayati and his wife, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, uh, Jayati was another important king in Vedic mythology, uh, who was a Satya. Jayati was a Satya, but his first wife, Jayati, was a Brahmin, a uh, Satya Brahmin. And his second wife, Sarvishta, uh, he came from Osura family. That means, that is, uh, Sudhya family. So, uh, these type of things are, uh, many instance, instances are there in Brahministic literature this time. But, Manu, uh, he, uh, 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 prohibited this inter marriage very strictly, very strictly. And because he understood, he realized that uh, if you want to give uh, uh, some kind of permanency to the uh, culture,
क्लास डिविजन और वर्ल्ड डिविजन इन अवर सोसाइटी विच इज बेसिकली द क्लास डिविजन इन अवर सोसाइटी एट दैट टाइम सो यू नीड टू प्रोविट द दिस टाइप ऑफ इंटरवर्नल नॉलेज एंड यू नीड टू प्रोवाइड इन दो जगह में सो मनु डिड दिस थिंग सो दिस इज द फोर्थ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ काउंटर रेवल्यूशन is intervarna marriage very strictly very strictly and because he understood he realized that uh, if you want to give a uh, some kind of permanency to the uh, caste division or varna division in our society which is basically the class division in our society at that time so you need to uh, prohibit the this type of uh, intervarna marriage and uh, you need to propagate uh, in the family so monu uh, did this thing so this is the uh, fourth consequence of counter revolution very important a huge attack on the women uh, <coughs> uh, was launched why because you know that uh, you may have this type of system that brahmin will marry brahmin sudra will marry sudra this type of system you may have but there is if there is a free mixing if there is a society some some kind of open society if there is a free mixing among the people then love between man and woman will definitely what will happen it will create the uh, will uh, uh, break the barrier of the wordness uh, uh, and uh, as a result it will happen that uh, <coughs> some kind of intervarna uh, uh, through the power of love through the power, love as a power so this power uh, can destroy this uh, the varna division because at that time when you are in love you will definitely not see that uh, 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 what is the caste and what is the varna uh, of your partner so at that time what happened that gradually this uh, inter varna marriage was uh, get a uh, boost so uh, a heinous attack against women was uh, launched by uh, manu and uh, it was said that it is the nature of women to seduce men in this world for that reason the wise are never unguarded in the company of females so you, you need to always guard your, uh, yourself from the women so this is the actually uh, monu culture and this is actually monu monu city you may see that we, uh, some some person say that what you are discussing monu city nobody knows what monu city is but without knowing consciously that this is monu city we are having this cultural trade in our mind to undermine the women to uh, have a uh, 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 deliberately uh, uh, view on women. This is practically, actually, this is the culture of Manu city, and the heinous attack was introduced by uh, Manu. And for women are able to lead astray in this world, not only a fool but even a learned man, and to make him a slave of desire and anger. So, what women can do? Women can lead you astray. if you are not fool if even if can be a wise man then also you uh, there is enough danger that a woman will lead you there astray and <coughs> make you a slave of desire and 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 uh, this is the uh, character of women uh, monu uh, said but uh, you see that uh, it, it came in a very sharp contrast of the preceding years at the buddhist time or in the buddhist india we will see that uh, <coughs> the women had a very special role in uh, our society in buddhist sangha there are many uh, women leaders and uh, the soma you know that one of the great uh, buddhist leaders at that time at the time of uh, gautama and uh, the soma was the daughter of the chief priest of uh, Bhimbisara, uh, and then uh, Sukha, and there are a lot of theories. They uh, came in the sangha, and they uh, did a lot of uh, contribution in uh, 
in the society. The society was some kind of open society, a modern society, and where women enjoy, enjoyed uh, uh, equal status of the uh, men. This was at the time of uh, Buddhist India, modern uh, India, and uh, at the time of uh, Gautama. But when Manu came, as a sharp contrast uh, with this thing, as a counter-revolution, that is, it is said a counter-revolution, this is the fifth consequence that is, a uh, heinous attack on the women was launched, and uh, practically women was uh, subjugated uh, by men, and they were pushed into the position of a second great citizen uh, at that time. भाजपा शासित राज्य सरकार है चाहे यूपी क्या हो चाहे कर्नाटक हो मध्य प्रदेश हो ये सारे मनु के लव जिहाद की कानून बना रहे हैं ये लव जिहाद का कानून और कुछ नहीं है ये मूल रूप से महिलाओं पर एक घृत हमला है जो कि पांचवा खतरनाक परिणाम है मनु स्थिति को लागू करने का क्योंकि मनु स्थिति में कहा गया है कि जो महिलाएं हैं ये महिलाएं मूल रूप से ये पुरुषों को ललचाती हैं महिलाओं की प्रवृत्ति जो है कामुक होती है पुरुषों को लग जाती है तो इसीलिए विद्यमान पुरुष को चाहिए कि महिलाओं को स्थिति बट बट इन ए डिफरेंट फॉर्म यू सी ऑल द फीचर्स इन मोनोस्थिति ऑल द फीचर्स इन मोनोस्थिति एक्चुअली आर इन आर बीइंग इंप्लीमेंटेड कॉन्टिन्यूसली विदाउट नेमिंग मोनोस्थिति दे वॉन्ट टू गेट इट फॉर्मलाइज बट वट दे आर डूइंग एक्चुअली दे आर कॉन्टिन्यूस अटैक ऑन द दलित the if you have uh, study there are many studies all the jobs government jobs you see how, how many uh, what is the percentage of uh, the uh, uh, um, traders uh, or in the corporate bosses are dalits very very few very very few how many uh, uh, teachers how many uh, uh, government employees are dalits very very few so why this is happening this is happening because they are implementing monosity when they were not in power some other government was there they were also implementing monosity but now they bjp was make it open they uh, they want to make they want to make it open formalize in the in the, in the name of monosity so actually in our society you know today why ambedkar said at that time that the age of counter revolution continues the counter revolution which started from manu and the time of pushamitra singh against the buddhist revolution that counter revolution continues and if we uh, can overthrow the dominism uh, from the uh, ruling uh, 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 state power then the age of counter revolution will come in, uh, and end and again the age of revolution will start if we can do this thing if we can overthrow dominism why is it he said because the status of the dalits are still uh, <coughs> ways, uh in that uh, what it is said in the uh, monosity the uh, status of the women in our uh, society you will see that we did not go back we could not go back to the <coughs> time of uh, ancient uh, india when women uh, used to enjoy the same kind of uh, uh, liberty same rights with the uh, male counterparts so uh, 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 age of counter revolution continues in in the name of uh, many other things like i have given an example with love jihad but there are many 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 other things that where the monu city is continuously being implemented without naming the name and this fascist forces they can do anything don't be satisfied with this thinking that no no this thing cannot be done no one could believe that a uh, hindu last is uh, the ruler of, uh, of our country the prime minister of our country and the country which is secular we are all, uh, very often we, we feel proud that our country is secular but a uh, prime minister from a secular country can advocate a hindu last and he can uh, go uh, to the uh, that is the bhumi pujan of uh, ram temple or the ram mandir uh, this is uh, no one could think uh, once upon a time but it happened there are many things we uh, happened under this rule because anything is possible under this rule and the open 
implementation of model sweeping. Uh, it is also possible, but in a different, uh, obviously in a different shape, is taking a lot of modern uh, things. So this is happening. The widespread plunder of public property, and it is now, is going on widespread plunder. Economic activities, you see what is happening in our country, the economic, act, economic activities uh, is shrinking. And plunder is increasing. The whole accumulation at the time of lockdown, at the time of lockdown, whole economic activities <coughs> come down. And the uh, GDP of our country that was uh, contracted uh, uh, to 24.3%, uh, minus 24.3% uh, contraction of GDP took place. But the wealth of Adani and Am Ambani that uh, increased, that was increased very full. And per day, per day they uh, make a profit of 4, 473 crore, or this this was this, this type of figure uh, is coming. So uh, how it is possible? When your economy is contracting, your GDP is contracting, economic activities is decreasing, then you, you are accumulating wealth. How? By through plunder. What is, what, you, are, you are plundering the national wealth? We are plundering the public property. So, pl plunder, war and plunder, it was the uh, mode of uh, surplus extraction for the domestic people, what I discussed, and today the same thing is happening in India in a modern form, under a modern cloak, it is happening. So, Monocity, uh, they, they have a, a strong desire to implement Monocity and they have a theoretical basis that the foreign rule, foreign culture, foreign means modern uh, for them. So, this foreign rule, foreign culture, foreign uh, administration, all this thing is obsolete in Indian soil. Indian soil demands the Indian type and this Indian type is provided by the Indian scriptures uh, including Monocity, including Vedas, including everything. The special type of accumulation of wealth through plunder, uh, 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 depriving a large section of the population from wealth, from right, through the uh, Indian scripture. This is actually what they uh, want to do, want to implement, and they are implementing it. And in future, if they can uh, accumulate enough strength in their hand, they can go for a Hindu Rashtra with the monocity as their constitution. We are standing in front of this danger. We need to realize this, and we need to fight this, we need to uh, propagate this thing among the people, that this is the danger we are facing today, and uh, unless and until we can defeat, we can uproot, we can overthrow the doministic uh, ruling class from the soil of India, we will never be able to go forward. So this is uh, my submission, uh, although I have taken a bit <laughs> हाँ <laughs> No, actually, you see that this is the very uh, common, uh, very popular uh, trick of the uh, Brahminic uh, forces. They always mix history with uh, mythology. The term is Itihasa and Purana. This Purana means, uh, Purana means what? Purana means actually old. Puran, Puran, Puran. This, this is a term is actually old. Uh, but when you say Puran, uh, then it, uh, it is actually a part of mythology. And when you say itihas, then it is a history. So history and the mythology, they uh, mix up. They mix up very uh, purposefully. Why? Because uh, to prevent you to understand the history of our country. So that is the trick. So what we have to do, we have to uh, <coughs> debunk the history and uh, mythology and uh, we have to uh, take out a pure history uh, from the uh, mythology. That is the task of the uh, Solomonic uh, uh, or 
Somali got today who we can say the progressive uh, scholars and the revolutionary scholars that is the task uh, in front of them to understand history to take out history from its uh, 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 mythological uh, mixture and uh, uh, to present the history in front of the people that is the task uh, in front of us because if you in anything in the world any anything in the world that is a continuation continuation and rupture this is actually history and if you do not understand the continuation if you do not understand the movement then you cannot understand the matter itself because matter and movement this is a, a totally interrelated thing without understanding uh, movement you cannot understand the matter so if you need to understand the matter in order to do that you need to understand its history so uh, and that is your trick to uh, prevent us to understand the history because they are mixing with this thing in, in, with mythology and that is our task to separate the history from mythology that uh, we uh, that i have tried to do इतिहास बोलते हैं ये बनवादी लोग और उनको भी मतलब जो किंगदंतियां जो भी है मिथ कथा है उनको ऐतिहासिक हाबित करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो इस पर क्या कहना है तो कौमर शंकर ने कहा कि ये बनवादी में षडयंत्र है कि वो इतिहास और पुराण दोनों को ये मिश्रण कर लेते हैं इतिहास तो वैज्ञानिक घटना परंपराओं के आधार पर होता है पुराण जो है काल्पनिक तो ये दोनों को बिल्कुल नहीं मिलाना चाहिए लेकिन वो इसलिए मिलाते हैं ताकि हम सही इतिहास नहीं जान पाए हमारा इतिहास बोध न जाग पाए तो इतिहास बोध जागने से अपने देश और समाज के बारे में हम सही नजरिया लेते हैं और वैज्ञानिक ढंग से आगे बढ़ते हैं और बदलाव के बारे में सोचते हैं तो इसीलिए हमारा दायित्व है कि हम इतिहास को पुराण से अलग करें और हम गति और जो वस्तु को के नियम को जानना हमारे लिए जरूरी है और गति और वस्तु को हम जान पाएंगे तभी हम इतिहास को भी सही रूप से समझ पाएंगे इसीलिए इतिहास को वैज्ञानिक रूप से वस्तुनिष्ठ रूप से ही उसको होना चाहिए और पुराण से उसको अलग करना चाहिए ये Uh, you said that one becomes a Brahmin by birth, right? So even in Upanishads, it said that Brahma is Brahma by birth. It is not just because of you getting birth as a Brahmin. It is because you need to know Brahman, or at least you need to make an effort to know the Brahman in order to become uh, have a Brahminical quality. Uh, there is also in Bhagavad Gita mention of you know the types of food you should eat and the types of quality you should have in order to be called a Brahmin. Uh, that of uh, uh, there is three guna. Uh, it is divided into three guna as uh, I don't know. Three guna being a pariyaya. There is a mention in Bhagavad Gita. So how can we say that? I mean, the Brahmin is not present. Uh, who are belong to the community? They don't even know Gayatri Mantra. You know many of them, and they still call themselves Brahmin. So, according to their own scriptures, they cannot be called Brahmin. So, how uh, realistic is it, it is to call, I mean, divide the society accordingly in this context? You know, I mean, here, not only, I mean, people are like that, who don't know Brahmin yet, and call themselves Brahmin. And the Vedas and Upanishads also say that, I mean, Brahmin is Brahman by Brahman. When Brahman knows Brahman, 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 तो उन्हीं के स्ट्रक्चर्स के हिसाब से जब उनको ब्राह्मण नहीं बोल सकते भगवत गीता में भी एक ब्राह्मण का एक क्षत्रिय का वैश्य शूद्र है उनके लिए खाने का भी तरीका उसमें दिया गया है भगवत गीता में उसके अलावा उनका क्वालिटी का क्या होना चाहिए करके त्रिकोण देवी तो यह है करके उसकी अलग डिविजन उसमें दिया गया है ये सब लोग सोलह नहीं कर सकते उनके हिसाब से ही वो ब्राह्मण नहीं बन सकते तो अभी के माहौल में उन्हीं के स्ट्रक्चर के हिसाब से ये भर है कि कैसे एक्सेस करेगा See, there is uh, two different uh, approach to this uh, thing. That who is a Brahmin? Uh, I said that before Manu, this notion was popular that a Brahmin becomes a Brahmin uh, by some qualities. Even in Rig Veda, where uh, in Dasam Mandala, tenth Mandala, the the in Purusha, this was prescribed. This uh, this division 
ದಿಸ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪೇಸ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಹೌದು ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಮಂಡಲ ಇನ್ ಸುಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ್ ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಶತ್ರು ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಶ್ಯ ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಶುದ್ರ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಹೌ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ Uh, this is the quality different different quality uh, the person poses uh, in the same family and according to the quality they perform uh, they perform their job jobs are allocated according to their ability this ability is connected with their quality and this quality actually determines their values so it is uh, indicated in the ninth mandala of ringvela however in uh, this uh, flexibility was there at that time in this transitional period what i uh, said that is the transitional period from 800 bc to 200 bc in this transitional period this flexibility was there how the manu you see that in i quoted uh, that is a manu said you know a brahmin is my birth uh, the son of a brahmin is a brahmin daughter is not a brahmin because women has no cause they are all sudras all women are sudras so it is a separate thing but the son of a brahmin is a brahmin and uh, uh, by the excellence of his origination he not only a brahmin he is the owner of of, of all wealth so this is said model that is why it, it was a perfect county it was a counter revolution and uh, this is the special uh, thing in zulu and this is the special thing uh, significance of uh, emergence of uh, manu city he, he has said that uh, here i just to just want to say that the brahmavid brahmai bhagavati this is not connected with this one so this is a separate uh, thing brahma vid brahma varati means that is uh, according to upanishad advaita vedanta the uh, brahma is divided into two parts one is the para brahma uh, i mean that the brahma proper and another one is uh, <coughs> jivatma that is the paramatma and uh, we are also we are having atma inside uh, our body and this atma is actually a part of paramatma but we do not understand it due to our ignorance when we have a proper knowledge of brahma then we understand that we are actually a part of brahma jivatma is a part of uh, paramatma when this knowledge comes to my mind i understand this knowledge then i after my death i will be a part of brahma there will be no uh, cycle of uh, rebirth there is will be no rebirth so brahma did jo uh, the person who will understand brahma will have uh, the knowledge of brahma he will be a part of brahma brahma ibo bhavati brahma did the person who has the knowledge of brahma the mind of bhavati he will be a part of brahma and there will be no birth and rebirth cycle that is the emancipation final emancipation of human being so that is a separate dis- discussion this is no related to this thing here we there are two type of approach i have said that is before monu and what was established by his monu sriti ah uh, uh, there is a monu said you know a brahman is very much the son of a brahmin is a brahmin daughter is not a brahmin because women has no cause they are all sudras all women are sudras so it is a separate thing but the son of a brahmin is a brahmin and uh, uh, by the excellence of his origination he not only a brahmin he is the owner of of, of all wealth so this is said model that is why it, it was a perfect county it was a counter revolution and it, it, this is the special uh, thing in zulu and this is the special thing uh, significance of uh, emergence of uh, manu city he, he has said that uh, here i just to just want to say that the brahma vid brahma bhavati this is more connected with this one so this is a separate uh, thing brahma vid brahma bhavati means that is uh, according to upanishad advaita uh, vedanta the uh, brahma is divided into two parts one is the para brahma uh, i mean that the brahma proper and another one is uh, <coughs> jivatma that is the paramatma 
and uh, we are also we are having atma inside uh, our body and this atma is actually a part of paramatma that we do not understand it due to our ignorance when we have a proper knowledge of brahma then we understand that we are actually a part of brahma jivatma is a part of uh, paramatma when this knowledge comes to my mind i understand this knowledge then i after my death i will be a part of brahma there will be no uh, cycle of uh, rebirth there is will be no rebirth so brahma bid jo uh, the person who will understand brahma will have uh, the knowledge of brahma he will be a part of brahma brahma hi wo bhave hi brahma bid the person who has the knowledge of brahma the mind of bhavati he will be a part of brahma and there will be no uh, birth and rebirth cycle that is the emancipation final emancipation of human being so that is a separate dis- discussion this is no related to this thing here we uh, there are two type of approach i have said that is before mono and what mono established by his mono sriti ah uh, on the marriage peter varna marriage uh, you can get the uh, you can develop many social movements against caste system in ground level uh, there are a lot of practices uh, there are two cups uh, two glasses systems are still uh, practicing uh, there are some practices that is uh, two ghats there are many this type of uh, practices uh, we are uh, seeing we are seeing many day to day operation and attacks on the village so we need to resist this thing oppose this thing and uh, everywhere everywhere we need to create a resistance in the ground level all these things are related to the ground level day to day struggle but we need to keep this thing in mind caste annihilation movement is related to overthrow the dominant rule this is ambedkar himself said repeatedly and this is the point of departure of ambedkar from his principles ambedkar said that the struggle of the sudra is for the state power if you do not have state power in your hand if you cannot overthrow the dominant forces from the state power then whatever you will do in the ground level if you can calculate it all these struggles into a political is a mega political struggle if you can calculate this thing the rule of dominism will continue so basically the caste annihilation movement in essence is a political movement the political movement of the sudras what uh, ambedkar said the political movement of the sudras or sudras means that is the toiling masses of our country so the political movement of the toiling masses of our country and the win and the victory of this struggle will uh, actually uh, ensure the uh, caste annihilation when it can uproot or overthrow the dominant ruler and establish the rule of the people in the country so it, it is a, it will come as a combination it will come as a jolt of many social movements which you need to develop day to day struggle in the ground level so this is the overall thinking comrade ka kehna hai ki jati unmulan ke liye kai sare karyakram किए जा सकते और करना चाहिए उसमें एक अंतर जाति हुआ अंतर धार्मिक हुआ और इस आंदोलन को आगे बढ़ाना दूसरा जो है आपका सामाजिक जो आंदोलन है सामाजिक बदलाव का सामाजिक सुधार का जो आंदोलन ये आंदोलन जमीनी स्तर पर करने की जरूरत है जैसे कि अलग ये जो अलग अलग कप में चाय देना या फिर आपका अलग अलग घाट में नहाना ये सारी जो जाति व्यवस्था के आधार पर ग्रामीण जीवन में जो बनाए गए हैं संस्थान वो सबको खत्म करना और इसके खिलाफ संघर्ष करना जाति भेद जाति व्यवस्था के हर प्रताड़ना के खिलाफ संघर्ष करना उसका विरोध करना और साथ ही साथ जो जरूरी ये है कि ये सारी जो लड़ाई है जाति उन्मूलन की लड़ाई ये जैसे कि अम्बेडकर ने कहा एक राजनीतिक आंदोलन शुद्रों का राजनीतिक आंदोलन है और जब तक शुद्ध सत्ता पर नहीं आएंगे तब तक ये ब्राह्म और उसके लिए उनको ब्राह्मणवादी सत्ता को हार के फेंकना पड़ेगा तो इसीलिए ब्राह्मणवादी सत्ता को हार फेंकने के लिए शुद्रों का संघर्ष है मेहनत का जनता का संघर्ष है ब्राह्मणवादी सत्ता जो है पूरी तरीके से पूंजीवादियों के हाथ में है तो इसके खिलाफ लगातार संघर्ष चलाना पड़ेगा और ये जाति उन्मूलन आंदोलन के जरिए ब्राह्मणवादी राज सत्ता को उखाड़ कर फेंक कर 
एक वास्तविक रूप से जाति भेद से मुक्त एक समतावादी समाज की रचना करनी पड़ेगी जनता का शासन जनता का जनवादी शासन की रचना करना पड़ेगा ये कॉमेड में हाँ कॉमेड रिजर्वेशन में आपको सवाल आया है हाँ बोल रहे बायस अगेंस्ट वुमेन इज अ मेजर फ्यूचर ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन सो वट सेपरेट द पोजिशन ऑफ वुमेन गिवन इन मनुस्मृति फ्रॉम दैट गिवन इन दर रिलीजन मतलब स्त्रियों के महिलाओं के खिलाफ जो एटीट्यूड है वो काफी मतलब उनको नीचे दिखाने का एटीट्यूड सारे के सारे धर्म में मतलब हम दिखते हैं कि जैसे कि कुछ जानते हो and uh, a strong uh, attack on the women is required because if you cannot control them you have to control them otherwise what will do the brahmin girl will uh, fall in love with a shudra uh, man so he, uh, if a brahmin family the brahmin in in the in the members male members if they cannot control the uh, uh, girl in their family then uh, the, this may happen so uh, actually controlling the women to prevent uh, uh, to de- de- develop in a, an atmosphere which can uh, destroy uh, the endogamy and it may uh, which can uh, 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 give impetus to the intergamy marriage so this was all these things they had in their mind so they uh, lost a huge attack against the women if you see in the buddhist why the buddhist india Why the Buddhist India gave so much freedom to uh, women, and not only freedom, but some kind of equal thing? Uh, why? If you see the story of Soma, Soma, uh, there is a very uh, interesting uh, psychological battle in Buddhist literature. That there was an every one, every person, uh, every lord, uh, his name is Mara. So the psychological struggle between Mara. And the Buddhist. So this is a very famous uh, subject in Buddhist literature. So Gautama Buddha also faced Mara and his uh, army. So this is also uh, in Buddhist literature. And Soma also. This is a very interesting thing that uh, so, uh, 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 one day Soma uh, did some med- meditation, and uh, Mara came in her mind psychologically, and Mara asked her that why you were uh, doing so much uh, practice. Why you are laboring so much? Because no woman will attain the height of uh, arath. Arath means the top person in the Buddhist sangha. So uh, no woman can reach the that that height of uh, arath. So why? What? What? Uh, why, what is the use of uh, your uh, labor? Uh, that is fruitless thing. What you are doing? So Suma replied that uh, yes, uh, women can also attain the height of arath. So very fantastic. Uh, Uh, David, uh, in his very famous uh, book, and that is a uh, Buddhist, uh, and uh, he has uh, many book on Buddhism. So uh, he is very famous book Buddhism. There he quoted Soma. The fantastic words uh, he uh, cited there. Where Soma said this thing, so the, see, he, this is the situation of equality. What man can do, we can also do. So there is no barrier, there is no second class citizen, there is no uh, inferior, superior, inferior division. No, but uh, why? Because there is no inspiration of uh, creating a barrier of inter caste marriage and uh, cart- cartelment of the freedom of the woman. There is no. Inspiration for doing this thing, but in a Brahministic society, where the especially after Manu, the particular Brahministic society emerged, they are they are very much uh, uh, with this thing. That is a uh, cartelment of uh, women freedom to prevent them to uh, fall in love with uh, the guys from other brothers. So uh, uh, it, because all these things get put in the very danger. So this is the uh, actually specialities in uh, Manusiti and the uh, Brahministic tradition. आह वो कॉम्बिनेशन का नाम ना खतरे का खतरे का खतरे का खतरे में डाल रहे कि नहीं या मतलब हम हमेशा ही बांसपा वाले लोग कहते हैं कि हिंदू हिंदू धर्म जो है वो खतरे में क्या वो खतरे में इसलिए है कि मतलब बाहर से कुछ आ रहा है या ये लोग मतलब मनवादी हिंदुत्व के नजरिए से इसको देखते हैं या इ 
Uh, actually, when BJP RSS uh, forces they are saying that uh, Hindu khatre mein hai, or Hindu to khatre mein hai, they are they are actually uh, uh, they are actually lying. Actually, khatre mein to dusra kuch hai. Janta khatre mein hai, mazdoor khatre mein hai, kisan khatre mein hai. So called backward castes uh, in our society, they are in a danger. The working class, they are in danger. The peasants are in danger in our society. We are seeing that a huge uh, prison movement is, is going on in daily borders. So, who is actually in danger? The peasants are in danger. The working uh, class is in danger. Working people, the caring people in our country is in danger. The so called backward caste, they are in danger. The women uh, of our country is in danger. All came in the line of Manu City, you will see. So, when, when the uh, Brahministic forces rule, actually all these forces are naturally uh, in danger. So, what they are uh, doing, they are just lying when they are saying that uh, Hindu. Uh, uh, Hindu is in danger. So they are actually uh, lying. Uh, Hindu uh, is in danger uh, in a different sense, you know. So if, uh, uh, according to their uh, classification, the 80% of our people are uh, Hindu. So that means that uh, peasant, uh, if you take the peasantry, then 80% of the peasants are also Hindu. So when uh, peasants are in danger, uh, uh, by the uh, farm acts which is uh, which has come uh, by Modi government and uh, the sole target of these acts to give a free hand to the corporate uh, companies in our agricultural area then naturally the peasants are in danger and when peasants are in danger 80% of peasants are Hindu according to their classification so definitely in that case the Hindus are in danger. In this way, in this way, 99% of our people are in danger. Why? Because the Brahministic rule. Because of their rule, pro corporate rule, their fascist rule, their saffron fascist rule. So this is the actual scenario. Uh, they are presenting it in a different form to hoodwink the people. Uh, there is a serial lie when they, they say that the Hindus are in danger because we know that the Hindu cor corporate bosses are not in danger. Adani, Ambani, they are not in danger. They are accumulating wealth in a huge uh, amount in their hand at the cost of the people's, people's life. So they are not in danger. Hindu corporate bosses are not in danger, Hindu uh, Jaminders are not in danger, Hindu Savant Lords are not in danger, Hindu bureaucrats are not in danger. Who are danger, in danger? Hindu peasants are in danger. Hindu working class are in danger. Hindu backward uh, caste, so-called backward caste, they are in danger. The minority people, not Hindu, they are in danger. So, this is the thing actually, but uh, what they are saying? They are saying to polarize the people, to polarize the people. Here we, uh, we just, I am just uh, indicating one thing, I am not elaborating because it is a large discussion. At the time of Shankaracharya, Shankaracharya's time was, uh, that is, uh, uh, 6th century, 6th century BC, sorry, C, 6th century C, AD, to Shankaracharya. From Shankaracharya, the Brahministic uh, uh, politics took a different turn. So Brahministic politics did not, from that time on, uh, did not depend on the Brahmins uh, only. What uh, they started to do, they were uh, 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 taking all the uh, non-Aryan uh, sects uh, as Hindu. They, they call Dalits as Hindu, they call Adivasi as Hindu, they call uh, the, in the Eastern India side, that is uh, from my place in the Bengal, here that is a non-Aryan non uh, uh, area uh, uh, in Indian uh, scenario. Here that is a different type of religion and different type of culture was there, it is called Tantra. Tantra means the Sakti Sadhana. 
it's a tantra when that is all, here you will see lot of uh, female uh, goddess uh, that is not the feature of the typical aryan culture aryan in aryan uh, god when you in the agni uh, uh, that is all the male uh, god but here you will find that kali durga all this this type of things so here they call this also hindu hmm. so hindu there is a umbrella term they uh, formed from the time of sankara charya so all the adivasi now there is a movement uh, in the adivasi people who are uh, saying that we are not hindu we are uh, uh, sarva so this uh, sarva movement they, they have a separate religion they are claiming they have a separate religion which is not hindu thing that is sarva religion they are claiming ambedkar said ambedkar know very well that what is actually hindu actually uh, that they believe this dynastic people believe that is uh, uh, brahmins only they are only the vedic uh, relation but other people that the mahar from ambedkar ke which uh, community and they are not uh, actually considered as hindu in their eyes they are just using them as a when they say hindu they are just using them against muslims so ambedkar said that i uh, i may uh, i born in a hindu family but i will not die uh, in a hindu family so he changed uh, very correctly he changed his uh, religion from hindu to uh, buddhism he came back to the original uh, place where the dalits uh, once after a time Uh, the Vaishya uh, and the Shudya people, they belong to Buddhism from the very beginning of uh, the Swamilik movement. There he came back, they, he actually came back to his home. So, so this is a separate discussion, how the Brahministic uh, forces from the time of Sankaracharya uh, successfully build up this thing and the uh, Savarkar Golwal Peru, especially Savarkar, his notion of Hindusta, that is a uh, following the notion of Sankaracharya. He was a true disciple of Sankaracharya. So, the concept of Sankaracharya took a new form in the writing of Savarkar and the new uh, Hindu uh, uh, term was uh, introduced. So, all these things happened. So, this, all these things we need to uh, go for a detailed discussion to fight the Brahministic people in a proper way. That uh, that is our lacking. That till date we did not do this thing. But this is I am I am very much grateful to Can Caste Revolution Movement and uh, RCF uh, Revolutionary Cultural Fund that they have taken this study in their hand. And in future, if we can have the, this study more often, then we will have this knowledge. And knowledge is the power. Thank you. हिंदू खतरे में कॉमर्ड शंदा ने जवाब दिया कि हिंदुत्व या हिंदू कभी खतरे में नहीं था नहीं अभी है खतरे में है आम जनता खतरे में है किसान खतरे में है मेहनत का शुभ खतरे में है दलित खतरे में है आदिवासी खतरे में है अल्पसंख्यक खतरे में है महिलाएं ये सारे भारत के जो आम जनता ये खतरे में है क्योंकि ये मनवा की हिंदुत्ववादी जो फासिस्ट है ये लोग सिर्फ और सिर्फ जो हिंदू कॉर्पोरेट जो है अंबानी अडानी उनको मजबूत कर रहे तो वो बिल्कुल खतरे में नहीं जो आरएसएस का जो आका है बीजेपी जो आका है ये कॉर्पोरेट लोग ये खतरे में नहीं है और वो खतरे में ना रहे करके बाकी अस्सी फीसदी जनता को लूट रहे हैं उनका ध्वंस कर रहा है और इसके माध्यम से वो इनके लिए कॉर्पोरेट के लिए संपत्ति संचय कर रहा है उनका शोषण करने के लिए जनता में नफरत पैदा करने के लिए वो जनता को उन्नी बना रहे हैं कि हिंदुत्व हिंदू खतरे में है ऐसा करके अल्पसंख्यकों के खिलाफ दलितों के खिलाफ या आदिवासी अन्य संप्रदायों के खिलाफ नफरत पैदा करते हैं असल में देखा जाए तो अस्सी फीसदी जो किसान जो आज कृषि के कॉर्पोरेटीकरण करने के लिए लाए गए तीन किसान विरोधी कानूनों के खिलाफ जो आंदोलन कर रहे हैं उसमें अस्सी फीसदी किसान जो है वो हिंदू है उसमें बहुत सारे किसान आत्महत्या कर रहे हैं और वो परेशान है उनकी खेती उजड़ रही है उसके लिए बीजेपी आरएसएस को तनिक भी चिंता नहीं है या हिंदुत्ववादियों को उसके लिए कोई भी चिंता नहीं है और ये जो वो तो ज्यादा चिंता है जो बड़े बड़े जो जमींदार जो भी भूस्वान जो भूस्वामी है जो कॉर्पोरेट है वो उनकी चिंता के सबक पूरी है क्योंकि वो उनके मालिक है अब इस चीज को इस चीज को देखकर हमको याद आता है छठी शताब्दी में जब आदि शंकराचार्य का उद्भव हुआ था उस समय उसका जो आक्रामक मनुवादी हिंदू जो अभियान हिंदू तो नबी का है ब्राह्मणवादी जो अभियान जो चला था उसमें खास बात ये थी कि पहले 
कि ब्राह्मणों को ब्राह्मणवादी अभियान का या सनातन धर्म का रक्षक बनाते हुए उसको उनको उनके जरिए अगुवाई की जाती थी लेकिन शंकराचार्य के मंच पर आने के बाद ये जो लोग जिनको ब्राह्मण नहीं नहीं माना जाता था या आर्य नहीं माना जाता था उन सभी लोगों को मतलब ब्राह्मणवादी परिवार में जो मनुवादी परिवार में शामिल करने का प्रयास शुरू हुआ जैसे कि हम देखते हैं कि दलितों के बारे में आदिवासियों दलित आदिवासी कभी भी हिंदू नहीं थे तो उन सबको शामिल करने का प्रयास शुरू हुआ और जैसे कि हम देखते हैं कि जो पूरी भारत है बंगाल असम जहां पर आपका तंत्र साधना का जहां पर जोर था मतलब वज्रयान संप्रदाय का जोर था क्या कॉम्रेड तो वो ये जो तो वहां पर जो आर्य देव, देवताओं की पूजा नहीं होती थी वहां जो देवी जैसे कि दुर्गा है काली है इनकी पूजा होती थी और वहां पर आर्य संस्कृति आर्य परंपरा उस हिसाब से नहीं था लेकिन उनको भी शामिल करने का प्रयास उनको भी कहा जाने लगे ये भी हमारे सब है सब ये हमारे मतलब ब्राह्मणी परंपरा में शामिल किया जाने लगा और हम देखते हैं कि जो अंबेडकर जिस समुदाय से थे कि महान समुदाय वो उसको कभी भी इन्होंने हिंदू धर्म का कहानी हमेशा शोषण शोषित प्रताड़ित करते रहा और उन्होंने क्या किया कि जो दलितों को आदिवासियों को ब्राह्मणवादियों ने मनुवादियों ने ये कट्टर हिंदुत्ववादियों ने दूसरों के खिलाफ लड़ाने के लिए अपने सैनिकों के रूप में वो इस्तेमाल करते रहे और इसी चीज को हमको समझने की जरूरत है कि आज की तारीख में जो आरएसएस का पूरा बोलवाला है ये बोलवाला जो जो पहले भी ये कहा गया है कि पंचानवे साल पहले राष्ट्रीय स्वयंसेवक संघ की जो स्थापना हुई और उसके करीब ही करीब दो वर्ष पहले समझ ये जो हिंदुत्व तो किताब सावरकर ने लिखी सावरकर की जो हिंदुत्व की जो सोच थी राष्ट्रीयता की जो सोच थी उसको माधव सदाशिव गोलवलकर ने आगे बढ़ाया तो सावरकर गोलवलकर ये कॉम्रेड का कहना है कि ये शंकराचार्य के आधुनिक वंशज है और ये शंकराचार्य के आक्रामक हिंदुत्ववादी ब्राह्मणवादी अभियान को ये आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं और पूरे जोर शोर से आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं कॉर्पोरेट कवर भी स्कूल के ऊपर में है तो इसीलिए आज की तारीख में इन सबको उखाड़ फेंकते हुए एक सामाजिक न्याय और समता सच्चे प्रकार की समता और धन निरपेक्षता की जो समाज गारंटी देता और सबको आजादी जिसमें महिलाओं को भी पुत्र सत्ता से आजादी मिले दलितों को भी मुक्ति मिले आदिवासियों को भी मुक्ति मिले और सारे मेहनत का स्वर्ग को प्रमुखता से प्रमुखता मिले इस प्रकार का एक समाज बनाने के लिए समाज को जाति व्यवस्था या ब्राह्मणी परंपरा मनुवादी हिंदुत्व के जिक्र जकड़न से मुक्त करना पड़ेगा इसीलिए ये अभियान जो आर एस एस माओ फाजीवाद के कचहरी का आधार मनुवादी हिंदुत्व के खिलाफ चलाया जा रहा है वो अभियान बहुत जरूरी है और मैं गवर्नमेंट ने कहा कि मैं जाति उन्मूलन आंदोलन क्रांति सांस्कृतिक मंच का आभारी हूं कि उन्होंने एक, एक महत्वपूर्ण उन्होंने पहल की है और इस महत्वपूर्ण पहल को हम जरूर आगे बढ़ाएंगे ऐसे करके कॉम्रेड ने क्रांतिकारी अभिनंदन दिया कॉम्रेड विजयलक्ष्मी और कोई सवाल तो नहीं आया ना नहीं कॉम्रेड नहीं ओके कॉम्रेड कभी इज देर एनी क्वेश्चन नो है ऑल क्वेश्चन ओके ओके तो साथियों अब हम हमारे पड़ाव के अंत में आ गए हैं और अब मुझे ये लगता है कि आयोजकों की ओर से मैं आ, हमारे प्रमुख वक्ता कॉमेट शंकर दास को हालांकि हमारे ही साथी हैं लेकिन फिर भी एक औपचारिक धन्यवाद देना बिल्कुल बनता है क्योंकि तो उन्होंने गहन अध्ययन किया आपने देखा कि उन्होंने किस तरीके से बताया आ, बाबा साहब अंबेडकर की सोच को एक दंडात्मक भौतिक वादी जो सोच है वैज्ञानिक समाजवाद की सोच बिना नाम लेते हुए उन्होंने उसे जोड़ा इतिहास को एक वैज्ञानिक चश्मे से देखते हुए उन्होंने इस चीज को मजबूती के साथ सामने लाया कि भारत के इतिहास में क्रांति का दौर था गौतम बुद्ध या लोकायत या चारवाक परंपरा का जो भौतिकवादी परंपरा के लोग थे जो तमाम ब्राह्मणवादी कर्मकांडवादी परंपरा का आत्मा परमात्मा जन्म पुनर्जन्म ईश्वर ईश्वरवाद पर प्रश्न उठाते थे वेदों पर प्रश्न उठाते थे वो क्रांति का जो दौर था वो पुष्यमित्र शून्य में जब व्यक्ति की हत्या की और शून्य वंश का साम्राज्य आया 
और मगध और पूरे आर्यावर्त में ब्राह्मणवाद की बयान बहने लगी तो मनुस्मृति को लिखा गया उसके अनुसार और ब्राह्मणी वर्चस्व पूरे समाज में कैसे रहेगा चारों वर्णों में ब्राह्मण का प्रादुर्भाव किस तरीके से रहेगा और मतलब ताकतवर ब्राह्मण का आज की तारीख में हम ये कहा है कि ये जो कॉन्वेट ने जो कहा है ये ब्राह्मणों के खिलाफ नहीं है ये मनुवादी हिंदुत्व को मानने वाले जो कॉर्पोरेट राज को मानने वाले ब्राह्मणवादी ताकतों के खिलाफ है तो इसीलिए साथियों ये तार्किकता के खिलाफ है और ये तार्किकता को उठाते हुए वैज्ञानिक चेतना को उठाते हुए उन्होंने कहा कि हमको इस प्रतिक्रांति के खिलाफ लड़ाई लड़नी पड़ेगी मनुस्मृति आदि शंकराचार्य का उद्भव और तमाम जो धर्म ग्रंथ हिंदू धर्म के जो जो जिन ग्रंथों में जाति व्यवस्था वर्ण व्यवस्था समाज में बहुसंख्यक लोगों को गुलाम बनाए रखने का विधान दिया गया है इसके खिलाफ लड़ाई लड़ना इस समाज को चलाने वाले कॉर्पोरेट राज को चलाने वाले राष्ट्र स्वयं सेवक संघ और उनके खतरनाक जो सोच है घृणित सोच मनुवादी हिंदुत्व के खिलाफ है तो ये लड़ाई को उन्होंने प्राचीन काल में जो चल रहा था दो धाराओं के बीच में संघर्ष श्रमण और श्रमण परंपराओं का उससे उन्होंने जोड़ा मैं बहुत धन्यवाद और शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं कॉम्रेड शंकर दास का और मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि भविष्य में भी हमारे कार्यक्रम में शामिल रहेंगे और हमारा साथ देते रहेंगे साथ ही साथ हमारे बीच में आप आपने देखा होगा कि कॉम्रेड विजयलक्ष्मी उपस्थित है कॉम्रेड विजयलक्ष्मी का भी मनुस्मृति को बेनकाब करने के लिए इस प्रकार से दलितों आदिवासी और मानवता के खिलाफ और महिलाओं के खिलाफ उन्होंने भी परिश्रम किया है और लगातार डिजिटल पोस्टर वो बनाती जा रही है तो मैं तो भी सक्रिय है और उन्होंने अनुवाद का कार्य किया और संचालन में मेरा सहयोग किया है मैं उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ मैं शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ कॉम्रेड कबीर कटलाट का जिन्होंने पूरे इस कार्यक्रम का इस वेबिनार का संचालन किया मनुस्मृति के ऊपर इस अभूतपूर्व नदी पर है तो एक उल्लेखनीय कदम है एक ऑनलाइन स्टडी क्लास का आयोजन करने में हमारी मदद की मैं उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ और दोस्तों आप सभी का मैं तय दिल से शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ जो सारे साथी हमारे बीच में रहे तमाम प्रतिकूलताओं के बीच में हम सब जानते हैं कि कड़ाके की ठंड और शासक वर्ग के भीषण दमन को झेलते हुए जैसा किसान लड़ रहा है दिल्ली के आसपास लाखों की संख्या में वैसे ही हमारे समाज में जो आधार काश्त महिलाएं हैं वो उत्पत्ता के पैरों तले घर में बाहर फैक्ट्रियों में खलिहानों में वो भी पिस रही है ठीक उसी प्रकार से समाज का एक बड़ा हिस्सा जिसे अस्पृश्य कर दिया गया था जिसे समाज के पायदान में सबसे नीचे फेंक कर पैरों तले दबाया गया और आज तक दबाया जा रहा है आज भी अगर कोई दलित नौजवान शादी के लिए घोड़ी पर जाता है तो उसे पीट पीट कर मार डाला जाता है किसी भी दलित लड़की पर उच्चवर्ण का जो व्यक्ति उत्तर प्रदेश जैसा राज बजा मनुवादी हिंदू का हिंदुत्व तो लागू किया है मन उसकी जो पूरा लागू है वहां पर उसको वो कर सकता है और रह सकता उसके मदद के लिए पूरी तरह से झपट पड़ती है ऐसे एक माहौल में हम देखते हैं कि मनुस्मृति के खिलाफ संघर्ष करना मनुवादी हिंदुत्व के खिलाफ संघर्ष करना है कदापि हिंदू धर्म के खिलाफ नहीं इसीलिए मनुवादी हिंदू के खिलाफ संघर्ष करना राष्ट्रीय स्वयं सेवक संघ के जैसे साम्राज्यवाद ब्रिटिश साम्राज्यवादियों के दलाल भारत के स्वतंत्रता संग्राम से गद्दारी करने वाले झूठे राष्ट्रवाद का ढोम रचने वाले सबसे बड़े देशद्रोही के खिलाफ संघर्ष करना है और अगर हम आरएसएस के खिलाफ संघर्ष करते हैं इसके नौ फांसीवाद के खिलाफ इसका मतलब आज की तारीख में जो हमारे देश को चला रहा है जो देश के मालिक बन बैठे हैं अंबानी अडानी जैसे कॉर्पोरेट सारे के सारे शासन व्यवस्था सारे के सारी नौकरशाही न्यायपालिका जिसकी खिदमत में लगी है उसके खिलाफ जो लड़ाई है और ये लड़ाई हमको वहां पर रह जाएगी जिस सपना को शहीदों ने देखा था एक समतावादी भारत बनाने का सपना जहां हर महिला आजाद हो जब जहां किसी महिला को पिंजरा तोड़ने के लिए आंदोलन करने की जरूरत न पड़े जहां पर किसी किसान को काले कानूनों को वापस लेने के लिए आत्महत्या न करना पड़े जहां पर हर मेहनत कश हर मजदूर हर्षे पर रहने वाला व्यक्ति दलित विद्यार्थी छात्र अल्पसंख्यक सबको लगे ये देश उनका है ये देश किसी के बाप का नहीं है इस देश की मिट्टी में सबका खून मिला हुआ है ऐसा देश बनाना है साथियों तो मैं आप सबको पुनः धन्यवाद देता हूं आप सबका मैं क्रांतिकारी अभिनंदन करता हूं और साथ ही साथ मैं एक और घोषणा करना चाहता हूं कि क्रांतिकारी सांस्कृतिक मंच और जाति उन्मूलन आंदोलन 
कल देश भर में जो तेईस लोग शहीद हुए हैं आपके टिकरी बॉर्डर पर सिंधु बॉर्डर पर कुंडली बॉर्डर पर चिल्ला बॉर्डर पर ठंड में या आत्महत्या में या फिर मोदी सरकार की अमानवीयता के कारण असंवेदनशीलता के कारण इनको श्रद्धांजलि सभा का हम आयोजन करेंगे कल दिल्ली में विभिन्न जगहों पर पांच बजे सभा का आयोजन हो रहा है मायपुर में हो रहा है कलकत्ता में पंजाब में तमिलनाडु केरल आसमुद्र हिमाचल सब जगह आयोजित हो रहा है आइए हमारे साथ कदम मिला के चले इस मनुवादी हिंदुत्व पर आधारित इस संधि को अनुरोध फसिष्ट का मुखार कर भेज दे एक समतावादी भारत बनाए आप सबको बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन सबको क्रांतिकारी सलाम इनकलाब जिंदाबाद ओके साथियों ओके कॉमरेड कभी ओके थैंक यू